is Karanak the Hound of Vengeance any good in patch 5.1? So we welcome patch 5.1 with Karanak the Three-Headed Hound, and when you're larger than the average Flesh Hound and have three heads, that alone makes you stand out from the pack. Let's look at how he gets even better. Also, that pun was a lot less lazy than calling him the bestest boy. Sorry grudges had to say it. Recruited from Quest, Karanak comes at 4,850 health on Ultra Size with 50 armor, leadership 80, speed 95, physical resistance 20 base as a demon, missile resistance 25 for having scaly skin, and spell resistance 50%. Note that 35% is the new standard for corn units, generally a significant change for 5.1. Melee attack begins at 55. Attacks are magical attack and inflict a wounded prey debuff. Minus 5 melee defense and fatigue gets checked up each time. Attack interval is the standard 4. I'm having to do this video before Total War Warhammer stats updates, but Total War Planner informs us that the maximum targets damaged by splash is 6. Melee defense starts at 45, which is pretty decent. Weapon strength is given as 550, a nice big number. Split between 380 base and 200 armor piercing, which presents our first fly in the ointment. This is an ideal hunter for squishy mages, but others not as much. Charge bonus starts at 50 and mass is 1500. Besides being demonic, Karanak has frenzy, very rare for corn demonic entities, has prey of the blood god, an ability, 120 second cooldown, 22 second duration, inflicts some direct damage, and stops the target from moving but is restricted to characters. Other than that, there's causes fear, terror immunity, demonic instability, and vanguard deployment. Karanak has the background skill manifestation of vengeance, granting minus 10% recruitment cost per hound's units, and plus 6 leadership with the same when embedded in an army. Speaking of that, as an embedded hero, Karanak provides scouting, an increased percentage chance to get magic items to drop after battle, his map passive is spread control, since who wants to defy the Hound? He has the holy trinity of Assault Garrison, Assassinate, and Assault Units, and Specialist to reduce the cost of these actions. For the Yellow Lot, it's actually completely identical to the Blood Reaper. Brutal Charge gives Weapon Strength plus 5% and Charge Bonus plus 5, you get Foe Seeker and Deadly Onslaught, and everything else you pick Grants weapon strength in addition to some other bonus, like melee attack, melee defense, physical resistance, more is better. No need to dwell. For the top line, Brass Collar and Thick Skin can be picked up at rank 7 to add plus 10% resistance for one pip. First for spell, second for missile resistance. Hates Slanesh provides a normal boost to melee attack and weapon strength against his factions, and Favored Prey can be used to up this even more. Ward save 5% for the army and double XP gain against Slanesh factions. I mean, given that Marathi, Sigvald, and Azazel are Slanesh factions, not just Natari, there is actually some serious heavy hitters to fight using this. At rank 9, Gore Feast adds that ability to Karanak for 1 pip, 0.1% regen in melee, so it's good, take it. At rank 13, Locus of Fury grants that augment to Karanak, so 90 second cooldown, 17 second duration, 35 meter range, plus 25% melee attack, and plus 40% charge bonus. Nothing bad about this. Karanak has no less than three personal lines. Available at rank 2, Talon of the Skull Throne grants plus 8 melee attack when his army is attacking, plus the passive namesake, increasing with intensity for each enemy unit within 30 meter range, with leadership wavering or lower, ending up to plus 40 melee attack and plus 50% base and armor piercing melee damage. This is so obscenely good for snowballing, I mean, just take it, right? Seasoned Hunter grants plus 10% health and immunity to contact effects, not just poison, but armor sundering and so on. Bone Gnar grants AP weapon damage plus 15 and bonus versus large plus 5 with 1 pip, but with 2 pips, the bonus is plus 30 armor piercing and plus 10 anti-large, which is nuts. More to the point, this is the gateway to Mind Prowler, reducing enemy leadership by 4 in the local region, and causes terror in person. Available at rank 4, Karanak's Howl opens that line, granting physical resistance 5% to friendly hound units and giving the namesake ability, one use initially, 120 second cooldown, summons a flesh hound's unit like Throt summons rat ogres. Alpha Hound grants upkeep minus 10% for hound's units in that army, and grants stalk for hound's units in that army. Stock is very useful for these sorts of units, so it's a very nice boost. Bestial Chorus grants plus 2 recruit rank for that army to recruit Hound's units. 
Also, plus one uses for the Flesh Hound summons from two paragraphs ago. Path Prowler provides plus 10% army movement range when embedded and grants Karnak himself stalk because why should he not have it when he grants it to others? And Devastating Flanker because why let Sunesh have all the fun? He doesn't just hate Sunesh, he's stealing Sunesh's gimmicks. Available at rank 8, and no, these are not mutually exclusive, you can take them all. Endless Hunter grants wound recovery time minus 1 and grants Karanak a 55 meter radius anti stalk bubble. Hidden units are revealed, do not pass go. The Scent of Prey inflicts minus 15% enemy hero success chance. You are being watched! 20% underway intercept chance, and Prey of the Blood God gets minus 20% cooldown. That's great. Ruthless Pursuer also takes two pips. At 1, Assassinate has an extra 8% chance of success, hero action cost minus 12%. At 2 pips, it's plus 15% success and minus 25% cost. I mean, hey, that's not bad. Though he's so good in battle, it's almost a waste. Finally, Temporal Prowler adds plus 10% to this hero's action success, not just assassinate, but the others too. Grants plus 15% chance of wounding enemy characters trying to assassinate the Hound, and adds perfect vigor. Lords can get this from campaigning far from home, which may or may not be easy to get, but heroes don't get that option, so it's very convenient here, considering the speed and ferocity of this hero for him not to get tired. His legendary item, which comes stock with him, is the Brass Collar of Bloody Vengeance. The passive gain is Leadership R size plus 25% and Spell Resistance 25%. Yeah, his default is 50, so he can legit become 85% Spell Resistant full time. The ability of the item, which is passive, grants a 55 meter cone of si I mean, a 55 meter bubble of silence hex around himself within which enemy spellcasters are silenced. If you're wondering if anybody in the game can do it better, well, I don't know about better, because it's not in an area, but Luther Harkin has disrupted full time even with his ranged shots, and they grant silence for 10 seconds. He's an exception among exceptions for that. Besides, spellcasters often come in clusters, so this is a powerful ability in the middle of a battle. So how do you use Karanak? Well, it's not that complicated. Although he becomes a very competent assassin on the map, and someone with an impact just by being on the map, you'd usually use him in battle as a hunter of any squishy whatsoever. A mage hunter as well as mage slaughterer. That's ideal. Everything past that is basically culling the weak and the lower armored, since he naturally enables heavier use of flesh hounds. Acting as the tip of the spear of a flesh hound charge is a natural and quite strong way to use him, which makes that force a lot more of a threat to regular cavalry and more hardened backlines. In the low ranks, it might be a little rough at times, but once Gorefeast is available and he regenerates, it's not as if he's that easy to kill. And basically, you just keep adding yellow line bonuses as you go and make him pump out more damage and more and more damage. In the meantime, you're just picking off targets of opportunity, then using high total weapon damage to maul anything that's left. I don't want to overcomplicate it because the Hound is very good at what he does, is not especially onerous to use, and once he gets stuck, he can pick his engagements to a pretty ridiculous degree. Just keep in mind that he's there to run things down and maul them. He's not a bruiser to punch through heavy armor like it isn't even there. That's what Scarbrand is for. Nonetheless, Aggression is usually the right choice with Karanak, given that he's a legendary hero, and you can't get him permanently killed even if you try. Thus, sometimes taking risks is by far the best choice. Compared to Ulrika and all her potential and complexity, Karanak is just very good as a high-speed assassin on four paws. Use him and be glad he exists at all. Cultists on steeds weren't anywhere near this good, even at a similar speed level. Take care, and have fun dispensing vengeance for the big guy.